Hello, everyone. Today, you are about to uncover the extraordinary tale of a multifaceted man. Endowed with irresistible charisma and incredible audacity, Futunga Babani Sissoko defied all odds to carve an extraordinary destiny, all without ever setting foot in school. Starting from his native Mali, he rose beyond borders and expectations, amassing fortunes in the trade of diamonds, precious woods, ivory, and oil. His name still echoes with admiration, mystery, and controversy in the marble halls of Dubai's banks, the power circles of America, and the streets of Mali. But behind the saga of a man who seems to have conquered it all, lies a plot that defies imagination. A story that involves magic, an Islamic bank, and a masterstroke that allowed him to swindle a staggering sum of $242 million from a banker. But who was Futunga Babani Sissoko? How did he manage to build such an empire and orchestrate one of the greatest scams of all time? Fasten your seatbelts and get ready to be swept up in the whirlwind of the extraordinary life of a man who continuously defied the rules and shattered expectations. Our story begins on August 17, 1942, in the small village of Darbia, Mali. It's here that a certain Futunga Babani Sissoko was born, a boy whose destiny would be nothing short of extraordinary. Born in a simple mud brick home, in a remote corner of West Africa, Sissoko received no formal education. However, far from holding him back, what could have been perceived as a disadvantage proved to be his most valuable asset. Indeed, it was in this arid land of challenges that he cultivated an audacity and survival instinct beyond the ordinary that would take him far, far further than anyone could have imagined. And so, swept up in the momentum of adventure, the young Sissoko leaves his native country at an early age. This journey, perhaps initially motivated by a simple thirst for discovery, would take him well beyond what he could have imagined. The real turning point in his life came in 1975, when fate put in his path a diamond of staggering value, worth $12 million, in Liberia. This providential discovery was not just a stroke of luck, it marked the beginning of his metamorphosis into a daring businessman, determined to shape his own destiny. The small villager from Darbia was then on the verge of becoming a key player on the international scene. In a bold demonstration of his strategic skills, Sissoko partnered with none other than William Tolbert, future president of Liberia. Together, they founded Darbio International, a company specializing in the import-export of logs, antiques, and ivory. It was this alliance and this new company that enabled Sissoko to lay the solid foundations of his influential status. His name began to resonate in the hushed corridors of the international business world, and his ascent, far from being over, was just beginning. Indeed, Sissoko, in his insatiable quest for expansion, did not content himself with his commercial successes. In 1989, he set his sights on the oil industry in Nigeria, a significant challenge that required as much determination as important connections. Fortunately, his ties with General Sani Abacha, a powerful and respected man in Nigeria, facilitated this audacious transition. However, this new field didn't resist long to Sissoko's overflowing energy who, in just a few years, managed to weave a solid network of influence. He was now one of the major players on the international economic chessboard. But Sissoko had not yet reached the pinnacle of his career, far from it. In 1995, driven by a relentless desire for growth, Sissoko decided to settle in Dubai. It was in this dynamic global crossroads that he founded Dubai Trading, further expanding his already impressive commercial empire. But it wasn't just for the favorable business climate that Sissoko chose Dubai. It's also there that he made a notable entrance into the Dubai Islamic Bank. Presenting himself as a prosperous businessman, he expressed his quest for a loan to afford a luxurious Mercedes. This is where a farcical story begins that will propel him into a whole new dimension. With a skill worthy of the greatest strategists, Sissoko managed to build close ties with the bank's director, Mohamed Ayoub. Presenting a most reassuring face, he invited him to his home, enthusiastically discussing his project of creating an airline. But behind this convincing speech and sincere smiles lies a much darker reality. What Mohamed Ayoub doesn't yet know is that this invitation is actually the prelude to a plan meticulously orchestrated by Sissoko, a plan that will turn out to be one of the biggest scams of all time. During a dinner whose flavor lies not so much in the delicious dishes as in the stories served, Sissoko adds an unexpected ingredient to the conversation, he claims to have magical powers. Such a confession could easily evoke laughter or skepticism, but Sissoko is a born storyteller, a master of the art of persuasion. With extravagant gestures and theatrical incantations, he invokes jinns, those supernatural entities of Islamic tradition, skillfully playing with his guests' amazement and disbelief. And he doesn't stop there. After this memorable evening, Ayu plays along and presents him with a sum of money, just to see if Sissoko's promise to double any amount is true. 
and, to his great surprise, the businessman from the far-off Malian village seems to accomplish the impossible and manages to double the amount, leaving Ayub amazed and deeply convinced of Sissoko's magical powers. The picture that emerges next is a masterpiece of clever financial maneuvers. Between 1995 and 1998, Sissoko, using his charm and manipulative skills, convinces Ayub to make 183 transfers to various bank accounts he holds around the world. The businessman, in a sleight of hand of disconcerting audacity, manages to extract a colossal sum of $242 million from the bank, all without raising the slightest suspicion. A feat worthy of the greatest financial thriller plots, orchestrated by this fascinating character from a small Malian village. When the scam is discovered, the charismatic con artist has already disappeared, leaving behind a distraught Ayub who is soon sentenced to three years in prison in Dubai in 2000. Sissoko, for his part, has never faced justice for this affair. He is sentenced in absentia to three years for fraud and practice of magic. However, his capture proves to be an insurmountable challenge for justice. Despite an international arrest warrant issued by Interpol, Sissoko manages to evade the grasp of the authorities, adding another layer of mystery to his already incredible story. But while the fallout from his financial exploit is shaking the walls of the Dubai Islamic Bank, Sissoko, on his side, is living it up. With his newly acquired fortune, Sissoko embraces an extravagant lifestyle that quickly becomes the hallmark of his public persona. His transformation into an international playboy does not go unnoticed, especially in the United States, where he invests a substantial part of his treasure. He leads a life of splendor and grandeur, cruising the streets of Miami in luxury cars, residing in opulent properties, and associating with celebrities and influential personalities. These contacts, he skillfully weaves into power circles, whether political, commercial, or cultural, without any reserve or hesitation. But that's not all. At this time, Sissoko also set out to realize one of his dreams, to create his own airline. Thus was born Air Darbia, a nod to his humble village of origin. However, the company, estimated at billions of CFA francs and based in Gambia, ended up going bankrupt. This failure, far from shaking Sissoko, gives rise to an unexpected reputation. His name, once associated with luxury and opulence, takes on a more charitable turn on the international stage. He manages, in fact, to carve out the image of a modern Robin Hood for a wide audience, particularly Malians and his many supporters. This image is fueled by his tendency to redistribute a significant portion of his fortune, however questionably acquired, to the less fortunate, making him a figure of remarkable generosity. In his native village of Darbia, for example, he used his wealth to transform the landscape. He rebuilt the village and electrified it, actions that earned him the admiration and respect of his fellow citizens. But his generosity did not stop there. Sissoko was known to shower his lawyers and employees with extravagant gifts, such as cars, luxury watches, and large sums of money. In Mali, his name was thus associated with philanthropy. He was famous for his tendency to hand out money to strangers on the street, further enhancing his image as a benefactor. Despite his questionable financial maneuvers, Sissoko remains a complex and fascinating character, loved and respected by many. Indeed, despite a path marked by controversies and bursts, Futunga Babani Sissoko managed to leave his mark indelibly. His legacy is commensurate with his life, complex and full of contrasts. And in this whirlwind of contradictions, one final surprise. On March 28, 2021, he found rest in the very place where it all began, his native village of Darbia. Thus, at the age of 79, his earthly adventure comes to an end, but his story, as fascinating as it is enigmatic, continues to live on. A story that is not just about a man who knew how to exploit the financial system to his advantage, but also about a character who, through his audacity and entrepreneurial spirit, managed to leave an indelible imprint in history. Whether seen as a high-flying con artist, a philanthropist, or a daring entrepreneur, Futunga Babani Sissoko succeeded in captivating the world's attention in an unforgettable way.